What if I told you that there is a way to heal your physical body, your mental health, your emotions, and also your spiritual energy all at the same time? In today's video, we're gonna be diving into the chakra philosophy, which shows exactly how our thoughts, our behaviors, and our emotions are directly correlated and intrinsically linked to our physical health, our mental well being, our emotional well being, and also our energetic well being. Within the chakra philosophy, there are seven main chakras, and each one is correlated to a different part of the body, as well as different organs and different bodily functions. And depending on your dominant emotions, your dominant thoughts, and your dominant behaviors, it will either be negatively affecting these chakras and putting them out of balance, which ends up creating tension in those parts of the body. And when we have tension in certain parts of our body or within certain organs, that tension will restrict blood flow, it will restrict energy flow, and then that part of the body will become compromised and then the body has difficulty bringing those parts back into balance and that's when illness or pain or other diseases begin to manifest within the body because of that stored emotion that we are not processing correctly. Each chakra that we're going to be talking about in today's video has two archetypes associated with it. One of them is the negative out of balance archetype and one of them is the in balance archetype. So the more you can move into the balanced archetypes of these chakras, you will begin processing energy correctly, you will be liberating old stored emotion, which will allow you to release chronic stress or unconscious stress that you're holding in your body. And I highly recommend while you're watching this video to be open and to be honest with yourself because a lot of us don't want to accept our negative behaviors, our negative patterns, and it can be really easy to be like, no, I don't act like that. However, as you're watching this video, I really invite you to be open. And if you're currently experiencing a health issue, pay attention to where that health issue is and what chakra is also correlated to that area and this will really help reveal to you those different behavioral patterns that you might be playing out in your life that are contributing to the chronic tension inflammation and illness within that section of the body and the body naturally wants to be in balance and the body knows exactly how to heal itself your body is so intelligent but if your unconscious mind continues storing emotions there and you continue playing out these behaviors and thoughts and, and emotional patterns that contribute to an out of balance uh, chakra, of course the body cannot heal itself when it is getting restricted of blood flow because of the tension that you are holding there, or when it's getting restricted of energy because of that tension, then your body cannot heal itself as it could if you released all of that and you allowed the prana, the blood flow, and the energy to flow to that area, then your body would become imbalanced. And that's exactly how your body heals itself as you liberate these negative emotions, these negative behaviors, thoughts, and patterns that are contributing to an out of balance chakra. However, I do wanna add a little disclaimer in here that this is not meant to replace a doctor's advice or treatment plan or any other medicine. This is something that can can be used alongside in order to holistically speed up your healing process and put your body back into balance. Let's go ahead and dive into each chakra and the archetypes and everything that you need to know in order to bring healing to your body, your mind, your emotions, and your energy. Your first chakra is your root chakra located at the base of the spine and all of the different organs and parts of the body that it deals with is your lower extremities. So your legs, your feet, your buttocks, part of your hips, as well as your elimination system. So that includes parts of the bladder, parts of the rectum, any of those lower parts of the body, kind of from your mid hips and then downwards. The root chakra deals with survival and meeting your basic needs and everything in your material world and your ability to manifest money, live in a happy, balanced career, and create a sense of safety and security in your life. When this chakra is out of balance, we tend to live in fear and fear ends up being our dominant emotion, especially when it comes to our stability, our security, meeting our financial needs and meeting all of our own basic needs, such as taking care of ourselves with our health and all of that. The negative archetype is correlated to the victim. The victim is somebody who has a hard time accepting responsibility for their problems and they blame the external world for their problems. 
They think that everything that's happening to them is caused from something else outside of them and they are not willing to take responsibility for it. That is the victim mentality and that throws this chakra out of balance. That means you are not processing these emotions correctly because you're living in, in anxiety, in fear, in the feeling of instability because you do not know how to meet your basic needs. This is throwing all these energies out of balance. This creates tension in all of those lower extremities of the body, including the elimination system. And eventually it leads to illness or pain or other issues attributed to the lower sections of the body. And the balanced archetype is that of the mother. The mother is independent and will go to great lengths to make sure that she's meeting her basic needs, that she's creating an environment of comfort, of security, of stability, and one of financial stability and abundance. And the mother archetype does not correlate necessarily to your mother, or it doesn't even mean that you need to be a mother in order to balance this archetype, but it does mean that you need to nurture yourself and care for yourself as a mother would her own child. And a mother would go to great lengths, even move mountains to make sure that her children are well taken care of, nurtured, and all of their basic needs are met. And we're talking about the balanced mother archetype. So that is why this archetype represents the balanced root chakra, because this is about independence, taking responsibility for all of your own problems, learning how to be independent in order to fix anything that you are currently dealing with so that you can come back to a place of stability, of security. And this foundation is essential to all of the other chakras. If your root chakra is out of balance, none of your other chakras will be in balance either. It's just like the foundation of a home. Anything that you build on top of an unstable foundation will not be stable either. So this is the first chakra that you must balance in order to bring balance to any of the other chakras. The second chakra is the sacral chakra. This one sits just above the root chakra and that's actually correlated to your sacrum. That's why it's called the sacral chakra. And this chakra correlates to all of the different organs that are below your belly button, but above the root chakra. This includes your lower back, your bladder, and also the ovaries and reproductive system. So the womb, the ovaries, the testes, and anything that's below the belly button, but above the root chakra. This chakra deals with our relationships, our emotions, our feelings, our sensuality. This is also the area of our sexuality and our creativity. So here, if you do feel like you have any hindrances when it comes to intimacy, or if you experience anything such as creative block, or passionate blocks, you don't know what your passion is in the world, or you're repressing your passion, not following your passion, or if you're constantly manifesting toxic relationships in your life, that is also an indication that this chakra is out of balance. The negative archetype of the sacral chakra is that of the martyr. The martyr is one who sacrifices themselves and puts the needs and desires of others before their own. This is different than a people pleaser because a people pleaser is more scared of confrontation or scared of disappointing someone. However, the martyr believes that they're doing a service to the world by living a half fulfilled life. So if you are in a relationship, for example, and you discount your own desires, your own wants and needs, Needs, and you're so ready to put your own wants and needs on the back burner in order to make someone else happy or in order to make a relationship work, this is where you are playing out the martyr archetype. When you believe that you living a half fulfilled life is doing a good service to the world or doing a good service to other people, you are now taking all of your own wants and needs, your desires, your whole life path, your soul's calling, and you're putting it on the back burner and you're saying it's not important or it's not as important as somebody else's wants and needs. Most women have this chakra imbalanced, which leads to reproductive issues or reproductive imbalances, bladder issues or imbalances, sciatica, low back issues. Men have this one imbalanced as well, and it's very common in men too. However, it is very common in women to have this chakra imbalanced. And if you relate to the martyr archetype, or if you have any imbalances in those areas of the body, it's indicating that you are playing out this negative archetype and throwing this chakra out of balance. In order to bring this chakra in balance, we need to take on the archetype of the balanced 
emperor or empress. So if you can become the king or queen of your life and realize that your wants and needs and desires are just as important as somebody else's. They're not above somebody else's. They're not below somebody else's. They are just as important. So in your intimate relationships, we should be enhancing and promoting our partner's wants, needs, and desires. And we should also be doing the same for us and we should expect the same in return. And this will allow you to seek out healthy relationships and be able to see what a healthy relationship is. And this is also where you are able to bring your passions back. If you feel any creative blocks, passionate blocks, it might be because you're putting your own wants and needs and desires below somebody else's and you're living your life for somebody else. And that is going to create these blocks. It's also going to create blocks with intimacy and imbalances in those areas. This chakra is also correlated to craving carbs or wine or chocolate. So if you have any of those types of cravings or even cravings for other sweets or even salty things, this whole chakra deals with a lot of those carb cravings or the cravings for things that are filling a void that is correlated to the sacral chakra. And it's correlated to an imbalance because you're still craving the sweetness of life so that you can get your passions back or you can feel like you're filling that void. That is why these cravings occur and it's from a sacral chakra imbalance. And again, moving into that emperor or empress archetype is going to be what balances this energy. You need to put your wants, your needs, your desires, your passions at an equal place as those around you. And you need to be focusing on your life's fulfillment and not discounting your wants, needs, and desires because of a relationship or because of the other people in your life. You matter and you deserve to live a fully fulfilling life. The third chakra is the solar plexus chakra, which is correlated and placed right around the navel, if not kind of right above the navel. And it deals with all of the different things within our upper digestion digestive tract. So this includes your stomach, your pancreas, the digestive system, your small intestine, everything that sort of sits all up in this area. The emotions that are very common within this area is feeling a lot of anxiety or insecurities, confidence issues, self-worth issues, confrontation issues, being really, really scared to stand up for yourself or to express yourself fully and let your light shine or radiate. The negative archetype of the solar plexus is that of the servant. When you feel as if you need to serve other people, or you are scared of confrontation, or you are scared of saying no, or you are scared of leading your life with conviction and moving towards your desires with willpower and determination. It's when you do not believe in yourself enough. So you'd rather serve somebody else's wants, needs, and desires because you do not believe in yourself enough to go towards your desires with enough belief and conviction. It is a lack of confidence. And it is again, when we are the servant, we are either serving serving other people's wants and needs, becoming a people pleaser, not saying no, all of these different things that diminishes your own fire. This is where you radiate. This is all of your confidence. This is where you shine. And if you're diminishing your own shine because you do not believe in yourself and you're not confident enough in yourself, this is where we throw the solar plexus out of balance. The balanced archetype of the solar plexus chakra is that of the warrior. So when you can step into the warrior who leads with conviction, they are not scared to say no to somebody. They are not scared of the confrontation. They're not scared of being assertive and standing up for their themselves, their wants, needs, and desires, and leading again with confidence, with willpower, with determination, and with conviction within their life. They are there to break through obstacles because they believe in themselves enough. The warrior goes straight on ahead any challenge that comes their way, they don't retreat back and say, Oh, I can't do that. Let me just retreat back. No, the warrior pushes through and says, I'm going to find a way to overcome this because I believe in myself. I'm confident in what I want. And I am here to fulfill my soul's desires and amplify that fire in my belly to move forward. That is the archetype of the balanced warrior of the solar plexus. And once we can have that, that will increase the fire energy in your belly. You'll notice that your digestive system improves. Your gut is able to balance because you're no longer holding that tension and being like, Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And you're putting out the fire. Your belly is correlated with the element of fire because the fire is what is able to digest the food 
and alchemize it into energy. You will become more energized in your life. Your digestion will balance. And that is that solar plexus warrior archetype. Our next chakra is the heart chakra, which is of course located right at your heart. This is the middle chakra, where it is the bridge between your higher three chakras and your lower three chakras. And this is correlated with all of the area of your upper chest, including some of your diaphragm, some of your lungs, your heart, your circulatory system, your arms, and your shoulders. If you notice that you get cold hands or feet regularly, that is an indication of a heart chakra imbalance because that shows that the circulation isn't as powerful and as strong as it could be. And of course, also your thymus is within this area and correlated to the heart chakra as well. The out of balance emotions that can get stored within this chakra is emotions of jealousy, lack of forgiveness, and also possessiveness can all take place and get stored within the heart chakra. The negative archetype of the heart chakra is that of the actor or the actress. So somebody who feels like they need to put on a play or exaggerate things for attention. So if you ever feel as if you tend to exaggerate things in order to create more drama or in order to call attention towards you, that is an imbalance of the heart chakra. If you are addicted to drama or if you notice that within your conversations with different friends that you really enjoy talking about drama or comparing yourself to other people, if you regularly feel sad because of comparison to other people, that is also throwing the heart chakra out of balance because that is correlated to jealousy. So the actor or the actress, they like to put on a show in order to get attention or they like to um, act out of accordance to who they really are in order to get somebody to like them. That is also an imbalance within this chakra. The positive archetype of this chakra is that of the lover, the one who's able to express themselves authentically, to be able to show love in a balanced way, and they're also able to receive love. And they don't go seeking love for attention, nor do they go seeking love from somebody who they have to act for, or they have to put on a show for. They do not want to act out of integrity of who they are. They want to show up authentically as who they are, and if they can find somebody who can reciprocate that love and love them for who they are, that's the balanced love. They do not seek love from somebody that doesn't want to give it to them or is not an actual good match for them or who they have to act for because that's not real love at the end of the day. You are just trying to fill a void from something from your ego or something inside of you that you feel is missing. So again, that balanced archetype is that of the lover. They also spread love. They don't spread drama because they go up to different conversations and they can see the love within people. They can see the love within themselves and they understand the bigger picture of why certain people act in certain ways and they can see that and understand that, which allows them to have compassion for other people rather than jealousy, rather than possessiveness, or rather than again, needing to put on a show or being addicted to drama. Our fifth chakra is the throat chakra and this is of course located in the throat and the body parts associated with the throat chakra, of course, our throat, our mouth, our jaw, parts of our nose, as well as our ears and our thyroid. All of that area of your body is correlated with the throat chakra. And this chakra deals with our communication, our expression, our authenticity, our truth, being able to speak and express our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions. And when this chakra is out of balance, we might notice that we hold tension in our jaw or our throat seems restricted or we have an issue with expressing our emotions. We can't find the words for our feelings or our thoughts or we feel fearful of expressing our emotions or our thoughts. And it also correlates to issues with public speaking or being able to listen properly since it also is the ears and part of being a good communicator is also being able to listen. The negative archetype of the throat chakra is that of the silent child. And usually throat chakra imbalances start from our childhood. And especially when we feel like we cannot express our truth or if we fear being reprimanded because maybe our parents were extremely harsh with us when we did something wrong and therefore we, we got a fear of ever expressing ourselves or admitting our mistakes or having communication, open communication about our thoughts and our feelings. This is all started from that silent child archetype. And sometimes this can also end up um, 
being way too expressive or creating the um, imbalance where we tend to blow up over small things because we have so much repressed emotion from the past that now, even if the smallest thing happens or if somebody's trying to have a mature communicative conversation with us and we blow up over it, we get overreactive. That's also caused from the silent child archetype. However, the balanced throat chakra archetype is that of the communicator, someone who's able to listen with compassion, with ease, with maturity. They're able to take in what somebody else is saying and see the bigger picture of things and to have patience with a conversation. They are also able to express themselves within balance and have compassion to have understanding and not be fearful of expressing their truth. The balanced throat chakra archetype, the communicator, knows how to communicate exactly who they are. They are not afraid of communicating their authenticity in front of other people. They are not afraid of disappointing somebody else or creating an upset situation because they know that communicating things is absolutely so important in creating harmonious relationships, in creating authentic, trustworthy relationships. And that's how you do it, through having the open communication that is balanced. It's not overreactive. It's not suppressing things. Because when we suppress things, it can create tension within our jaw, within our ears, which is why we get ear ringing sometimes, because there's tension that is causing too much pressure within the head. It causes different, again, ear issues. It can cause headaches because of the pressure. If you ever get pressure headaches, it might be, be because you have a throat chakra imbalance. And again, any jaw or neck issues, feeling like you have a very quiet voice or a way too loud voice, all of these things come from that silent child archetype. So in order to heal this, we become the open communicator who puts authenticity and truth and communication above all else, and they are not afraid to express themselves. So that is the balanced communicator, and that is how you balance the throat chakra. The sixth chakra is our third eye, which is located right between the brows, right here on the head. It is correlated to our pineal gland, which is the gland that connects the right hemisphere of our brain to the left hemisphere of our brain. And it is also connected to our actual eyes and anything that's in the top hemisphere of our head. That is all connected to your third eye. And if you fear change, or if you have issues with overthinking, or if you cannot tell the difference between your intuition versus other things in life, that is also indicating that you may have your third eye chakra out of balance. The imbalanced archetype of the third eye chakra is that of the intellect. And it's not saying that being an intellectual is negative. In fact, being an intellectual is an intrinsic part of the third eye. But when we are solely an intellectual and we deny the intuitive aspect of ourselves and we deny the emotional feeling aspect of ourselves, that is when the third eye becomes out of balance. Your third eye is the unseen eye. So it's the intuitive eye that feels, and it is an eye that sees because your pineal gland is sensitive to light and it creates your sleep-wake cycle, so your circadian rhythm, based on how much light you're taking into your eyes, then the pineal gland reads that. It is your third eye and it is the unseeing eye. It's the intuitive eye that again connects the right hemisphere of your brain and the left hemisphere of your brain, which are the intellectual side of your brain and the intuitive more, more emotional feeling side of your brain. So the intellect being the negative archetype of this chakra is the one who overthinks, overanalyzes, denies more intuitive feeling type of information, and they solely rely on scientific hard facts within reality. That decreases your level of imagination. It will decrease your level of you know, spiritual insight and the insight that you could have on situations or on life in general, it does cause overthinking. It will cause tension in your head. A huge um, symptom of an out of balance third eye and a huge symptom of overthinking is of course pressure in your head, which creates headaches. Of course, you can also have pressure in your head from your jaw and from your throat chakra, but you can also get pressure in your head and headaches correlated to your third eye, which is again, overthinking, overanalyzing, being overly intellectual and solely relying on the intellectual side of things. The intuitive side of you 
If you are the balanced archetype, which is the intuitive, the intuitive does not fear change because the intuitive can feel into a future moment and gain comfort and clarity. They know that they'll be able to navigate it because they trust their intuition. They're able to feel their intuition and they believe in their intuition. Your intuition is a powerful aspect of you and someone who is solely an intellectual denies their intuition and a lot of the times they will fear change because they do not trust their inner guidance system, which is your intuition. Your intuition also opens you up to creativity and new ideas. So if you ever feel like it's hard for you to expand into ideas, especially regarding to, to your future, and if you feel like, oh, I can't do this because I'm going to be stopped because of this, and this is the only way, and this is the only thing I can see and understand, the intuitive side opens your brain up to a wild imagination of possibilities. And this is where you're able to navigate your life with ease. This is where you're able to listen to that inner guidance system because you realize that there are so many ways, so many unfolding paths that you can take and you can listen to your intuition to know which one is right for you. That's the intuitive side of your brain. It is creative, it is expansive. And that's when you activate your pineal gland where you're able to balance the right and left hemispheres of your brain rather than solely using one side. So that is how we balance those when we start to really honor and listen to our intuition. And that is also why the third eye symbol is correlated to two flower petals is because it represents the left and right hemisphere of the brain. And to open your third eye, you need to balance these and begin listening and trusting your intuition. And then our seventh chakra is that of the crown chakra, which sits right above the head, but it also affects our scalp. So even though it's a chakra that sits above our head, it does affect our scalp. So if you ever experience any hair growth issues, hair loss, or any other scalp tension or scalp issues, such as dandruff or other things going on within your scalp, it is linked to the crown chakra. The imbalanced archetype of the crown chakra is that of the egoist. So someone who's living from most of their ego rather than from the spiritual, more bigger aspect of life, which is that of the soul. The balanced archetype is that of the guru. The guru sees the bigger picture in things. And it's not saying that the ego is bad. A lot of the times within spirituality, you're, you'll hear like, starve the ego, feed the soul, get rid of the ego. And you should not be striving to get rid of the ego. That is not how you balance the crown chakra. But it is when you are able to see the bigger picture and you are able to work with your ego in balance. The ego is your survival mechanism and it is an essential part of the human experience and it is impossible to get rid of the ego as a human. You will always have an ego, but when your ego is leading your life, that is when you are imbalanced. The ego has different attachments such as um, living your life based on your ego, so wanting money or a fancy car or a great career because of the status it's going to give you or because of the ego inflation that it's going to give you. That is when we are living dominantly from the ego or the ego also has other attachments such as fears, fears of moving forward, fears of survival, fears of all the different worldly things. If you fear death or all the other things, we, when you're living your life not fully open, not fully living, that is because your ego is dominantly leading your life. You are stopping yourself. You are starving your soul because your ego has fears or your ego has different desires that are not actually feeding your soul because that fancy car does not feed your soul. The fancy person that you want so badly for your ego doesn't fill your soul. So the balanced archetype is that of the guru. And if you have an overly inflated ego, you might hear the word guru and you might be triggered by that, thinking that it means something egotistic. The word guru does not mean something egotistic. It means somebody who is enlightened to more and sees the bigger picture. However, the guru is not a self-proclaimed guru. They do not think that they are above anyone. They see how they are connected to all. That is the guru. They see the bigger picture and they see how they're connected to every single one on this planet. And they also do things because of 
how it's going to feed their soul and how it's going to feed the collective. If the ego is dominant, that's when we're living out of fear. That's when we're living out of attachment. But if we can make our soul dominant, or at least in balance with our ego, that is when we balance the crown chakra. And that is when things begin flowing. Your crown chakra is the channel between spiritual energy, the cosmic energy moving into your body. So if you want to channel or be connected to spirit or spirit guides or other psychic senses, your intuition a lot more, opening your crown chakra will open all of that energy for you. And we also channel energy from the earth and that comes in through our root chakra. And we have both of these channels of energy moving through our body. And when you can open up all your chakras and they're in balance, that means the energy from the earth and the energy from the cosmos are moving perfectly in balance through your body. And when that happens, you can have something that's known as a Kundalini awakening. And this is a very powerful experience. It is a lot to go through within this particular video, but I'll at least give you that information that if you want to have a Kundalini awakening, or if you want to, um, you know, experience the full flow of energy through your body. It comes through balancing both of those um, negative and positive poles of energy through your body. And that is how you go through and balance each of these seven chakras. Those are the balanced and imbalanced archetypes and how you can begin balancing yourself as well as your body and all of your organs and your energy, your mental health, your emotional health, all of your entire well being, you can balance through balancing the chakras. That will cause energy flow through your body. You will heal, heal different organs, your systems within your body, the balance of hormones within your body, your endocrine system. Your endocrine system is linked to the chakras as well. So if you want to balance all of your energy, your well being, your physicality, everything, it comes through balancing the chakras. And this is an ancient map to your body and how your body processes this. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comment box and I will be sure to either answer those in a future video or even answer them directly within the comments. And thank you so much for joining me here for today's video. I'm sending you all so much love and until next time, bye.